Hello, I'm David Caparis again, and now we're going to go into the demonstration of the Somatic IT OEE product. We'll demonstrate the OEE product at an operator level, at a supervisor level, and at a management executive level. In today's simulation, we'll be using a product that's also available from Siemens called Technomatrix Plant Simulation that will drive the control layer information. So we'll take a look at that first. So this is the product that will simulate the plant floor. Now for our simulation we have a very simple bottling line here that's producing bottles. As you can see here we have a blower, a filler, a labeler, a packer, a palletizer, and then an applicator, and then it goes into the warehouse. So this product will simulate our plant floor and simulate the information that we'll be interested in. So I want to point out one piece of information on here. Our current order that the line is operating on is 1189. And we'll see that when the operator logs into the OE application. So now that we've talked a little bit about the simulation program, let's move into the actual OE product. So an operator will need to log in to access the OE screen. So we'll go ahead and log in as an operator. Now the OE operator screens are all touched based, which means they will work on any HMI that's touched and enabled. So we'll go ahead and log in as a line operator. So this is the first screen that the line operator will see. It's an overview of the entire plant with each line. In our plant, we have two lines. We have the C001 FLP line and the C002 FLB line. What we were looking at earlier was actually the C001 FLP line. And I mentioned earlier that we had an order ID of 1189. As you can see, that's the current order that's operating on the line. In addition, we also know the product ID that we're producing. We're producing king bottles on this line. So in the line overview, as you can see, we have the overall time period and the status of the line. Currently, this line is running, and we have a lot of green. The green represents a running state. We also have a few down times here. For example, this red one over here, when we hover over it, gives us a state of unknown error. So the line stopped for an unknown reason, and we need to determine why. So what we can do is drill down and view the machines on that line. So by going ahead and clicking on running, this will drill down and show you the machines on that line. So as you can see, all the machines are running. We have some context information like the number of stops on each one of the machines. We also have the OE value in the upper right corner. Production just started, so we have a low OEE value. As soon as production moves along and produces enough bottles, the OEE value will represent the true line OEE. Now, this screen is completely configurable, so the number of stops is a configured option. We can also show the OEE values, the number of bottles that are produced, and any other context information that we're tracking. But I want you to take note of the number of stops. We have five stops here. Uh, and this machine here is actually the filler. I want you to take note of that as well. What we're going to do is create a simulated stop on this machine. So we're going to go back to the plant simulation. This is the filler machine right here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and simulate a fault on this machine and then we will go back to the OE operator screen where the operator will be able to see that a fault occurred. So I just generated a fault. As you can see, the bottles are no longer being produced by the filler. So the rest of the line will eventually run out of bottles to process, which means we have a downtime. So let's go back to the operator screen and see what that looks like. Right now we can see that the labeler is waiting. It's not receiving any bottles. And then our line for the filler just stopped. So we just had a stop. But let's find out what the reason was. Right now, the red represents an electrical fault. So when you hover over it, you can see the specific reason. But you can drill down further. By clicking on the red box, this will let you see the stop management screen. The stop management screen will allow you to 
understand the fault that occurred on that machine. You can also override that fault if you know it wasn't an electrical fault, it was actually a hydraulic fault. We can actually reassign the stop justification. So here we can select downtime loss, we can select the fault, and then we can select the hydraulic fault. This will update the fault reason to hydraulic fault as it just did here. Now all these faults that we just went through is completely configurable based on your Pacific equipment. So the equipment will define the types of faults that are available. All the buttons that we just saw are based on configuration and you can have as many as you need for the simulated line. So now that we're able to update the fault, I'd like to go back to the line view. In the line view here, we see that we have an electrical fault on the line. And when we drill down again, this is the machine view here, we'll see that the number of stops also has updated to six. Previously that was five, and it also just updated it to six. So we want to resume production. We'll go back to the simulation and resolve the fault on the filler machine. So I've just resolved the machine fault on the filler. As you can see, bottle production has resumed. So we can go back to the line operator screen and see that it will update the, with the current status of the line. And as you can see, the operator now knows that the machine is running and that the line is now operational again. We can go back up to the line view. In the line view here, we can see that the entire line is operational again. Um, once again, it's for order 1189 with a product ID of King Bottles. And this is the total number of units we've produced so far, 9,944 units. So we've just talked about how we can view OE information. But what if we want to update a downtime in the past? Well, you know, we had some downtimes over here, this one specifically. That's an unknown error, which means uh, it was an uncontrolled fault that we didn't take into account. And we want to assign a reason to that. That's what the ju stop justification screen is. So let's go there now. The stop justification screen will list all the faults that have occurred on the line. And as you can see, we have a few unknown faults here. We'll go ahead and select the first one on the list. Here, we can assign a downtime reason. Let's say it wasn't a actual fault, but it was a speed loss. So we'll go ahead and click speed loss, and we'll say that it was actually a waiting. The record has now been updated. So this downtime has been assigned a waiting downtime. So the next screen we'd like to do is some analysis. So an, an operator knows that uh, machines have been going down. They want to see where they are in their current production. Are they operating efficiently with the OEE values that they currently have? So what we'll do is we'll view the line chart. So let's head there now. On the line chart, it allows an operator to analyze the OEE information that's available. So currently this line, C001, is operating at 13% OEE. This is the beginning of a production. This value will increase. And we can see that we have the red line being the max speed capacity, the blue line being the total capacity, and then the green line being a target capacity. As you can see, the blue line and the red line have the same slope. So we're doing pretty good on staying on track about our speed capacity. And we can also summarize this information down here to see the states that the line was running on. Once again, we can see that this is contextual to the product that we're producing, King Bottles. But let's say that's my current shift. OE can be collected by shift, another context variable that we can collect. Currently, we're viewing shift 2, the morning shift. But let's say we want to compare that to the previous shift. What we can do is click Previous Shift. And this will show you the previous shift's OEE values.
As you can see, the previous shift OEE has a 76% OEE, which is decent, almost on target. And as you can see in the slope as well, they were doing pretty good about staying close to max capacity. This allows a line operator to compare their current shift with the previous shift so they can determine whether they're operating efficiently. Also, supervisor can utilize this screen to determine why a particular shift is not producing the same quantity as another shift. It's a great, little, it's a great analysis tool. So we've talked about line charts, but let's also talk about algorithms, another way to analyze your line. So we'll go to the algorithm chart. The algorithm chart will show you the OEE. We can see that the OEE percentage is 76%. We can see that we have availability, quality, and performance, and the OEE value graphed here. And we can see the line charts that compare the overall time period with the overall value of each of the key matrices. In addition, we also have counters here. We count the number of wrong bottles versus the total produced. And it's graphed on the counters incremental chart and we can compare it to see how well we did about the number of bottles we produced versus the number of wrong bottles that were produced which is an important aspect of understanding how well your production line is doing. So this was the operator perspective. This is what the operator will see. As you notice, it's nice and big text, very simple, straightforward interface, nice big buttons for the operator. This is touched enhanced, so this can be used on an HMI that has touch capability. They don't need to have a keyboard and mouse. So this is the overview of the operator screen. What I'd like to do now is show you the supervisor screen. The supervisor screen will allow you to do more analysis. Now, I'm going to go ahead and log out, but I want to mention one more thing about this screen. This is all web-based, so you don't have to have any client application installed on your local machines. It can be deployed on every machine that has an Internet Explorer browser or locally at your desk.